everyone and welcome to I guess what we're calling week three of our Hello Sunshine Knit Along. And we have no sun today in Muskoka. It is cloudy and from what I've heard today from the knitters who've been in it is going to be quite a stormy weekend. So I hope you have lots of work ahead of you on your shawl and I'm sure you'll get a lot of progress done. How's everyone doing? Hi Lori, hi Sharon. Um, have you made great progress this week on your sun rays? I have heard from two sunshine seekers this week, quite surprisingly. One finished her shawl a couple nights ago. She was just casting off at the end of the sunshine. And the other one I think will be finished this weekend. So congratulations to both of you. That is amazing. The progress that you have done, the speed at which you've done it is amazing. Um, the first one who contacted me to say she'll be finished Thursday night also came in to um, buy yarn for a second one completely different different colors and she's going to put some of her own design elements into it so let's hear some of your progress reports have you had to rip out have you had to start over um, do you feel like you're in the rhythm now Today what we're going to go over is, um, I think I'll, I'll demonstrate how to pick up the stitches along the slip stitch edge that you've created at the beginning of your rows so that you'll be able to transition nice and neatly into the second piece which is your, your sunshine. So I've got a little bit of practice yarn which was from my sample and my 3.75 millimeter needles for picking up and glasses are helpful and the pattern so I don't expect that most of you will be ready for picking up stitches yet but it's always nice to have a demonstration and then you have a visual for when you get to that part what, we re what I refer to as the sunshine is actually called the shawl center on your pattern instructions. Hi Cindy. Um, yeah, so I don't have an actual slip stitch edge to demonstrate on at the beginning of the row because I've already picked up stitches, but I can easily demonstrate it on the opposite end because you were doing your slip stitch there also. And I think I mentioned last week that when you're reading the shawl center directions, the um, fiber artist, Natalia, who designed the lovely shawl, she is recommending picking up one stitch for every edge stitch. And that will be in color A. So for me, the color A is the, the yellow. For you, it might be different. She didn't give an actual number of stitches. Um, I think we'll all come out with the same number of stitches as long as we're aiming for every slip stitch. But it's kind of nice to have the final count so you know what you're aiming for. So I've written in 154. So that's the magic number that you're trying to get when you're picking up all the way across the beginning of your row section. So I'm going to bring the shawl over closer to the camera and then you can really see what stitches I am picking up. Oh, and I did want to show off my dress. This is what I call the ideal maker's dress. It is an apron front. It's pure linen, handmade, and it's dipped in indigo, all natural dye. So the color gives you kind of an ombre effect. Maybe I should stand back a bit. I've had a lot of comments on it today and working in a yarn shop it is the perfect dress because it's got these deep pockets 
I can put in my tape measure, my snippers, and my ball of yarn. So it has built-in yarn holders. I can put my knitting needles in there. I've got a small work in progress that I've been doing between um, tending to customers today. So on this side I can put in the ball and my needles. And I think it'd be great anytime I have to stand in line, like sometimes to go into the grocery store, I can just pull out my needles and knit away. It also would hold a ball of water, my cell phone, and I just think it's amazing. I would wear it every day if I had the, the opportunity. So this dress, I was up at a new shop in Huntsville called Fiber Huntsville. Um, one of my customers and her daughter are both um, making gorgeous um, jackets and two-piece outfits, hats. They're both amazing in um, the sewing department, which I am not. And um, so that's Karen and Diane. The mother is Diane, daughter is Karen. And they have been um, also uh, featuring other fiber artists. So this dress is not made by them, but they do sell all sorts of linen outfits. So this is my maker's dress. And I will put in the comments below the the contact info for their shop because if you're ever in Huntsville, Ontario, it might be worth a stop in just to see all the beautiful fiber art, needle felting, um, fabric, textile, and uh, she gets more uh, fiber art work in all the time. Okay, so I'm coming up close to the camera so you can see where we have to pick up our stitches. And just to make it even more visual for you, I'll try to pick up in the opposite color. So I'm using my third <coughs> color, the orange, and I'm going to demonstrate picking up along this blue section. So we're aiming for each of the slip stitches, which looks like a chain or V. And we want to go under both bars. So they're laying on top of the knitted fabric and we're going under both bars and then we're just bringing the yarn over and knitting one stitch through the edge. And then we go into the second slip stitch under both bars. Very important to get both. That's what gives you a stable edge. If you're only picking up one bar, it's going to be very loose and it will stretch. And you have to remember that the top part of the shawl is holding that whole bottom piece that you're knitting on now. So if you just merrily go along and pick up one stitch for every slip stitch, sometimes they're a little bit tighter so you have to look closely, and sometimes they're a little bit looser, then you should get the magic number which is 154. Does that show up okay? Okay, so that is how you're going to be picking up your shawl center. And does anybody have any of their technical questions ready to type into the comments? We did have a good question um, on the discussion thread on the event um, page by Catherine. And it was not specific for the shawl center, the top part. It was not specifying doing a slip stitch at the beginning of every row. And I noticed that too in the pattern. Um, I chose not to do a slip stitch at the beginning of every row. So I think it's just personal preference and what looks more pleasing to your eye. 
Either way will work. It'll still give you the stretch that you need along this edge here. So I can't remember really why I chose just to do a knit stitch at the beginning of every row, but it all worked out exactly the way it should. And if you want to do the slip stitch to match the bottom edge of your shawl, then that would be perfect too. Just be consistent in whatever you choose. Hi Anne. Hi Janie. Was not in focus. Okay. Well, I also have um, a tutorial that I will put up on the discussion page this evening and that will show a close-up photograph with instructions for picking up stitches. So I hope that will help you. Okay, so shawl center, slip stitch or knit stitch at the beginning of every row, whatever you choose to do. The other part about the shawl center directions is that um, the um, decreases are not always consistent as a repeat to the end of the row, but that is all perfectly okay. So for instance, um, you would be asked to, on the right side row, knit two together, knit one, that's your repeat, to the end of the row, and then purl the last stitch. So if the row doesn't work out with exactly a knit two together, knit one, as your last three stitches before the edge stitch, then don't worry about it. It's not a big deal you're still going to end up having the correct number of decreases across the row to give it that nice half sun shape and you'll just knit maybe an extra stitch or two to get to the last stitch and that will happen there's um, one decrease row two three four five six decrease rows to get you from here to the final number of stitches the very top, all you're doing, like the top of a hat or the top of a mitten, is threading through your remaining yarn, through the remainder of stitches, drawing it into nice little circles, and securing it and sewing in your ends. Next week I will give you um, a tutorial and maybe a demo on the video of how to do the um, finishing, sewing in of your ends. So if you're feeling that your method previously was not as neat as you would like it, then I can show you a close-up of the inside of the shawl next week and um, maybe you can practice a little bit differently to finish off all those colorful ends and that way if somebody turns the shawl inside out it looks just as neat as the right side. When it comes to blocking the final step after you've sewn in your ends um, we're really, really quite fond of the Yucalan wool wash, which is all natural, and basically we just soak the shawl in a basin of room temperature water with a cap full of the wool wash. It's liquid, made in Canada, and um, leave it for 20 minutes. You want the, the stitches and the knitwork to really absorb the liquid. And then after 20 minutes, casually go back and squeeze out the excess suds, no rinsing, and then find yourself a nice dry bath towel and put the shawl down and just roll the towel like a sausage. And that will really help the excess moisture to be absorbed. And then you have to have quite a large area where you can spread out your shawl and just block it with your hands. I don't think any of you will really need to pin the edges. This yarn is amazing when it's blocked. So it will grow slightly in the length this way and the width and the little points, if you can just pull them down with your fingers while it's wet and then let it stay overnight and maybe into the next day, depending on how humid it is, outside that should block it beautifully and then it's all ready to wear but we still have another week to go over all the finishing details 
but I am realizing how quickly some of you are knitting, so I wanted to catch you before you went too far. Hi, Debbie. Yes, it is an amazing shawl. It is a piece of artwork. Um, Elaine says, the waiting for rain pattern has an excellent tip on knitting the first stitch of a row for stretch. Yes, this, this pattern too incorporates a slip stitch, which gives it ultimate stretch and stops the edge from curling. Hi, Judy. Um, Lish is having issues with changing colors. The number of stitches on the edge rows are all 101 sets. However, after row 5, the number of stitches are not consistent. Okay. Um, if anybody has any comments that they could offer to Lisha, if you're at the, the first change of color and you have any tips, maybe just um, comment below. I'll go over the comments after and then I can also help answer any questions. So, um, the hot topic this week besides weather <laughs> was um, in the knitting world based around this shawl. This shawl seems to bring up a lot of unusual topics or questions. Um, last week we discussed are you a process or product knitter and that was a topic that came up from some of the sunshine seekers working on the shawl. So this week the question that has come up is are you a perfectionist or imperfectionist when it comes to your knitting? So that question pertains to if you are a perfectionist, then you cannot live with any sort of flaw or mistake in your knitting. You would rip it back and start it over and over again to get it just right. If you're an imperfectionist, you can live with the tiny flaws such as a twisted stitch or you might have um, forgot to decrease on one of the rows and then you just make it up on the next decrease or increase section. So that's an interesting question I'd like to pose to you. Would you rip your work back when you see a flaw? Something that um, does not interrupt the flow of the pattern. So this one, for example, you have to be very precise with where the increases line up and where the decreases line up. Those are mistakes that are valuable to having the outcome turn out the way you want it to. So, but little flaws like maybe a twisted stitch or you forgot to do a slip stitch at the edge once in a while you knit it by accident. Can you live with that? Or does it upset you to the point where you just have to rip out and start again? Yes, if it's a gift for somebody, it, it should be perfect. But there's a lot of beauty, too, in imperfection. And if you think of, um, think of it like a design element, something that you've put in accidentally, but it becomes your signature, and then it tells a little story. I mean, every time you, you wear the shawl and you know there's a little imperfection there, it will remind you of where you were or what state of mind you're in while you're working on the shawl. And it could be a fun little story. If you're gifting the shawl to somebody, you could um, confess to them. You know, there is a little mistake. See if you can find it. Kind of like, where's Waldo? Um, the other thing to remember, too, is... There's um, the Amish community, for example. They don't believe that anything should be 100% perfect because only God can make um, a perfect creation. So they intend to put in little mistakes and little flaws into everything that they make by hand, quilts and so forth. So far we've got a perfectionist, 
That's a good suggestion, Elaine. The stitch count does vary because of your short rows, but the main thing is you have to have the same number of stitches between every CDD and every increase section. And if you have just switched colors and you're off one stitch, it could be the way you've, you've joined the two colors together. Did you possibly lose a stitch there or create an extra stitch? Yeah, minor flaws, minor mistakes. You're right, Debbie. You can leave them in. Because you have to think, too, from the point of view, you know the mistakes there, but would somebody else really notice it? I mean, if they were standing two sheep apart, social distancing, would they notice that you forgot to slip a stitch along the edge and you knit it instead? If you drop a stitch, of course, you have to repair it because that is something you cannot live with. That will just run and run and run every time it's washed and worn. Okay, so while we're contemplating if we are perfectionist or an imperfectionist, I guess what we'll do is move on to our trivia question for this week. So if you've been following our knit along and you are a sunshine seeker, you know that um, each week we have a little trivia question pertaining to the name of our project. And um, the first person who correctly identifies the name of the music lyric, so the name of the song, and the person who performs it or sings it. So we need two parts to the answer. Typed in the comments, we'll receive another ballot to go into our draw bucket. So we've already had two winners, uh, one last week and one the week before. And the more ballots you can get into our sunshine draw bucket, will give you more chances to win the grand prizes. So I've got the grand prizes here at the corner, and this time, again, it is a double grand prize. So we've got one grand prize from Muskoka Yarn Connection, and the other grand prize basket is coming from our yarn supplier. So it is a combined um, mix of a yarn winder, an earth yarn sock kit, We've got some Royal Alpaca um, yarn. We've got stitch markers. We've got a wrist project bag. We have Debbie Lyle, Handmade in Canada Merino sheep cards, and Debbie Lyle, uh, Handmade in Canada Merino shawl pin. And then just because there was a little bit of talk about um, using our Hmm. Using our little highlighted strips to read our patterns and keep our place, I'm throwing in a package of those too. So that will give you 200 little highlighter strips. And um, so let's get on to the trivia question. <laughs> it's a mouthful. I used to think maybe you loved me now, baby, I'm sure, and I just can't wait till the day when you knock on my door. Now every time I go for the mailbox, gotta hold myself down, cause I can't wait till you write me, you're coming around. So the first one who can tell us the correct performer or singer and the name of the song that these lyrics are from. And you have your clue because you know Sunshine is in the title. Last week I think we had about three correct answers, but of course we can only take the first one. Okay, we've got a winner. 
Kyoko won. She has won two weeks ago. So I think what we're going to do, one winner per trivia. So Elaine is one second behind her and she has the correct title. So the name of the song is Walking on Sunshine and it's Con Katrina and the Waves. And does anyone know the year it came out? That's not part of our trivia contest. 1985. That was a good year. Some really happy, happy tunes came out then. So Elaine will have um, another ballot into the draw bucket with her name on it. And congratulations. That was a quick response. So next week we have one more um, week to catch up to go over some of the techniques and um, one more trivia question. And then the following week, you don't really have to be finished your shawl. That's not, there's no deadline for that. The following week will be our live sunshine draw. And um, we'll pick the winner right from this box. And then somebody will be very happy to get the two prizes. So thanks everybody for watching and uh, hope you have a great weekend with some sunshine in your corner of the world and lots of knitting, hopefully on your shawl. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.